right. Hi, everyone. Good evening. It's 7.01 and we will get this party started. Um, so just to let you guys know, um, Kyle is in Texas. He's at the um, Ministers Conference um, at KCM. And they're doing it at um, EMIC Church. And so he's biscuit getting loaded up full of stuff. They've been having um, sessions all day long from, uh, I think this is the third day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then he comes back tomorrow. So he said it's just been awesome. And um, yeah, so here I am. Let's get this rocking tonight. Um, and let's just start with a word of prayer and get it started. So, Father, I thank you for um, tonight. I thank you for the word that you have for us. Lord, I ask that um, you speak through me and just let what you want to be heard tonight, Lord, speak to our hearts. Let us walk away um, just more in love with you, more um, knowledgeable about you and your word and how to succeed in um, just this walk with you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So let's start off. Um, we'll do our offering message. And I want to go to 3 John verse 2. 3 John only has one book in 3 John. And we're going to go to verse 2. And we probably all know this. It says, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health, even as your soul is well. And that um, is in my modern English version. But if we go to the NIV, of course, we know it says above, above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers so we want to be prospering in every area of our life and i looked up the word prosper the meaning of prosper is to succeed in material terms to be financially successful where most people um, look at prosperity, but this he's talking about even more than that, even as your soul prospers. And so it also says to flourish physically, to grow strong and healthy, to be strong and prosperous, and to make successful. To prosper is to make one successful. So he's saying above everything else, I want you to be successful. I want you to flourish physically, mentally, emotionally as your soul prospers. Like as our soul prospers, then we're able to get into the word. And if our soul is prospering and doing well, then we're going to be um, more apt to be able to get in the word and read the word and get it into our spirit and have our spirit prospering. And when our spirit is prospering, you know, we are able to hear the word of the Lord, be led of him and following his guidance and what we should be doing where he wants to take us and where he wants to lead us. And, um, you know, I just love, I know last week Kyle was talking about how like God doesn't need our tithes and offerings, but he wants it to give it back to us. Love gives and God is love. And so his whole thing is, for us to give so that he can give back. And when he gives back, he gives back even more. 
and to prosper us, to bring in us into that place of great prosperity. And I just think it's so awesome that he loves us so much. And, you know, it's like when you have kids, you get a little tiny glimmer of that and just how much you want to just bless them. It's like, if you had the means to just go out and get them anything that their heart desire, you would totally do it because it makes them so happy. And just to see their them smiling and just be so thankful and so excited for something that they got, you know, um, we went to uh, the store yesterday and the girls got these little Valentine's Day things and they were just so elated. They just were so in love with these little stuffed animals. And it wasn't, it wasn't anything for me to give it to them, but they were just so grateful and so thankful. And, you know, it blessed me to bless them. And that's how our father is. He, it blesses him to bless us. And um, so we give so that he can give back even more. And um, so I'm just going to pray over our offering. If you guys, I know Kyle sent out the link um, multiple times. If you need it again, if you need the information, feel free to, um, you know, text and get that information. So, Father, we thank you for um, these seeds that we are sowing into your kingdom. And I thank you, Lord, that when we bless you, you just bless us back more in return and that we prosper in every area of our lives, Lord, physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially and that we are a light unto the world, Lord, that we are the salt of the earth and that they see us prospering in you and they see a difference and they inquire about it, Lord, that they inquire what is it that is different about us because we are prospering in every area of our lives. And so it brings them to the, that point of being so inquisitive and wanting to know what it is that we do. And we give you all the praise and all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So tonight, um, I want to talk about um, kind of trusting trust you know I know Kyle said last week that we are going to put basically an all-out war against fear and kick it out of our lives for good and let me tell you guys I was so excited to hear that because I struggle with fear anxiety and it's something that I've been fighting against and man, it's, it's been a battle and every fight against the enemy is a battle. And that's why we're here to get our faith boosted, get into faith, find out what faith is, what we need to do to combat those attacks of the enemy that when he comes in telling us lies, telling us things about ourselves that are untrue, we know how to counteract it. And we're not on the defensive, but we're on the offensive coming at him strong and um, just trusting in the Lord to bring us out because I'm ready for a breakthrough and to be done with all the fear because man, if you struggle with fear, you know, it's no fun to have it like 
paralyze you and put you in such a panic that you don't know what to do. So let's get it out. Let's get that fear out of here. All right, so let's turn to Proverbs 3. Proverbs. Three, five through seven. Verse five says, trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding or wisdom. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So I also want to read the amplified version of this um, because I love the amplified. It just always gives such a greater understanding and helps you really see it. So it says, lean on trust in and be confident in the Lord. Be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Jeez. Do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Okay, and so many times I've talked about how Look, Satan is the God of this world and he gets us through our worldly senses, our, our mind, our thoughts, our feelings, our um, sense of touch, um, you know, uh, pain in our bodies, you know, what he can do to our body or putting thoughts in our mind. Um, and that is kind of like, our own insider understanding. Oh, my arm hurts. Oh, okay. Well, that's what your understanding is. But what we need to do is trust, be confident in the Lord and what he says instead of what we feel. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge him and he will direct and make straight and plan your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn entirely away from evil. So to combat anything the enemy throws at us, we have to trust in the Lord. That includes fear, sickness, um, financial struggles, anything. Remember, I talked a while back about being delivered from a curse, being a threefold thing, being physically, spiritually, and financially. We have been freed. And those are the areas that the enemy will try to bring in lies and deceit and try to make us believe that pressure instead of what the word says the word is the reality jesus said i am the way the truth and the life and there's a translation that says i am the reality Whoa, I am the reality. Now let's take that a step further and go to John 1, 1. I am the reality. Jesus is the reality. Okay. Well, if we go to John 1, 1, we see that In the beginning was the word, 
and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were created through him, and without him, nothing was created that was created. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. So in the beginning was the word. The word was God. Jesus is the word. It says in the Amplified, here we go again. In the beginning, before all time, was the word or Christ, and the word was with God, and the word was God himself. So if we go back to Proverbs 3, that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, your, your fleshly knowledge, your, what you've gained from the world and all that stuff. And if we put this in, knowing that Jesus is the word, the Lord is the word, God is the word, then we can say, trust in the word with all your heart. Man, trust in the word with all your heart. We've got to trust in the word with all our heart, not trusting in what we see, what we feel, what we hear, what we touch. We've got to trust this word. I am the, he said, I am the reality. The word is the reality. This is the reality. So whatever this says is what is really going on, okay? Everything else is a lie that the enemy is trying to put pressure on you and try to believe that as being the truth, but it is not. And that is why it is so important for us to be in this word, reading it every day, meditating on it and just devouring it and getting it into our hearts, not just our minds, you guys, because the mind is the same thing. We can't just think it in our mind. We have to know it in our heart. And there's a big difference there. And that's what religion is all about. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. I know by his stripes I'm healed, but do you? Is it in your heart? Because if you knew it, it would be manifesting in your life. And that's when you know when you're in faith. If it's manifesting, if you're, if you're seeing the fruit of the spirit manifesting in your life, okay? So, So the Lord is trusting. Trusting in the Lord is trusting in the word. We just, we put the word above everything about else. Like I said, what we see, what we feel, what we hear. Um, so we trust the Lord with all our heart. Now, let's go into that a little bit about trusting with our heart. Okay, what is our heart? It's not our mind. It's not the physical heart because that would be like trust the Lord with, you know, your brain or your stomach. Like you can't trust him with a physical organ because God is a spirit and we are a spirit being. So um, we know there are other verses I'll just, you guys don't have to turn to these, but real quick, I'll just um, bring up, of course, we have to bring up Mark eleven twenty three 23, because that says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt 
in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So he's saying, look, if you believe in your heart, not just your head, you've got to believe it in your heart and your, in your inner being. And John, oh, sorry, Romans 10, 10 also talks about that. It says, for with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. It's with our heart. And it says, you know, when we can confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, Jesus is Lord, then we will be saved. And so it's not just a mental ascension of believing with our mind. It's got to be deep within us, you guys. It's got to be in our heart that we know it. So now what is our heart? If it's not our mind, we are a three-part being, spirit. We are spirit, soul. We have a soul. We live in a body. Our soul is our mind, our will, our emotions, and we live in a body, okay? Now, our heart, when we talk about like the very heart of a matter, we are talking about the very core, what is the deepest part of this issue okay or if we're talking about like the core of a tree we're talking about the very center of the tree so when we talk about um the heart of man we are talking about the very core of our being the very center of us which is our spirit it's our spirit that we connect with God, that we believe in the word. So we have to um, believe with our spirit. And to believe with all of our heart is to believe with our spirit independently of our mind or our body. We can have complete chaos going on around us, but believe in our heart and our spirit. No, God said with perfect peace or great is the peace of my children because they are taught of the Lord. They may be running around like crazy, but if I am believing it in my heart, it will manifest. They will then become calm. But if I am believing in my heart that all children are crazy and chaotic and run around like madmen, that's what's going to happen. It's out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's out of the heart flow the issues of life it's with our heart what we believe in the deepest core of ourselves in our spirit is what we will manifest and experience in our lives you guys if we believe that everyone is against us guess what People are going to be coming at you and being totally against you. But if you believe, no, I'm a child of God. I am consumed with love. Everywhere I go, the love of God just radiates out of me. People feel the love of God everywhere I go. The words I say are consumed with the love of God then the people around you are going to be changed and they're going to be saying things like, dude, what is it about you? What is this that I'm feeling when I get around you? You know, it's such peace. It's such calm and it's going to be different. And that's what happens when we believe with our heart 
versus our mind. We may think we know the word with our mind, but still not believing it with our heart. And that's where we need to get it. And that's where coming in, meditating on the word of God, muttering it over and over to ourselves, that's where we're going to get it into our heart. And we first have to admit, I don't believe this. I'm reading this and I don't believe this. And once we admit that we're not believing it, then we can take a step towards believing it. We can then make the choice and say, you know what? I am going to believe this. I am going to believe every word of the Bible is true, whether my circumstances show it or not. And when we make that final decision to believe the Bible is true, no matter what my circumstances say, our circumstances will begin to change. But it's believing it first. Then you will see the manifestation of it. Okay. So man is a spirit. We're going to go to 1 Thessalonians 5.23. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. May the very God of peace sanctify you completely. And I pray to God that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you, who also will do it. So here we see we are spirits. We have a soul and we live in the body. And like I said, the spirit man is the real you. And we're going to go to, like Paul said, and um, you guys don't have to turn, but 1 Corinthians 9, 27, he said, but I keep under my body and I bring it into subjection less that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So here we're seeing that Paul is referring to his body as an it. So we know that if our body was the real us, he would have said, I put myself, um, I keep myself under and I bring myself into subjection. But no, he's referring to it as it. And like I said before, the enemy will come and attack. He attacks our physical body, mind, emotions, our feelings. Um, because he can't access once we are born again. He has no access to our spirit. He has only access to the, the physical world and trying to put pressure and deceiving us. That's all he has is lies and deceit and just smoke and mirrors. That's all it is. And we continue to fall for it because we keep believing what we feel, what we see, what we hear, what we touch instead of the word of God. By his stripes, I was healed. I was healed. So Satan may try to put symptoms of this COVID on you. And the pressure is so intense and you feel like you have it. But the word of God says you are healed. Which one are you going to believe? 
Are you going to believe the word of God in your heart that says, I am healed? Or are you going to believe the symptoms that say you are sick? You have to agree with one of them. And where two or more are gathered, believing, they will have whatever they believe. So you're the second witness. You're either going to believe with Satan and the sickness, or you're going to believe with God and be well. So um, we have to trust, like we said, trust in the Lord with all our heart trusting in the word with all with our inner man okay hey buddy yep so fear is a spirit and we feel it many times in our emotions and so much so um to the point where it can be like physically constricting us and um putting us in a place where like we're panicked and we can't do anything and I'm telling you I've been there and it's not fun um but when we get into the word we combat the feelings of insecurity or the pain in our body or the fear we have to first of all find the promise in God's word for whatever you're seeking. If it's fear, find out scriptures about faith. Find those scriptures about faith. Faith is going and love. Perfect love casts out all fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear not, for I am with you. Get these scriptures and memorize them. Get them in your heart to where when this fear comes at you, you have them in your um, your box of weaponry. You have them stored there so you can fight. The, the word says we don't fight against flesh and blood but against the rulers and the principalities of the darkness of this world and so the artillery that we have is faith the word the word okay we fight with the word so find those promises in the word of what you're dealing with and if it's fear Hey, boom, there's three of them right there, okay? Then you have to believe God's word. And if you don't believe it, you have to make the decision to believe it. And you have to meditate on those verses until that is what you are believing. You have to meditate and say, okay, I am feeling this fear, but God said, fear not for I am with you. He is with me right now. Therefore, he is my protector. He is my refuge. Under his wings, I shall find refuge. If you need to memorize the 91st Psalm to help you, do that too. Talk to yourself, meditate on the word, believe those scriptures. Begin, even ask the Lord, say, Lord, I need your help to believe this. But belief is a decision. We have to just decide, I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe it because you believe something. You're either believing the fear or you're believing the word. And I know we live in such a sensory world that it's so easy to believe the fear instead of the faith and what the word says. But God said that he is our shelter. He is our protector. He is our refuge, our strong shelter, our um, 
time or safety in times of trouble and we can go to him. So we have to believe these promises in God's word. And number three, we have to not consider the contradictory circumstances, whether it's fear, pain in our body, we have to not consider that. We have to consider the word. I'm not saying denying that it's there. You have to acknowledge that it's there, but don't consider it. Okay, yes, that's there, but the word says this, and I'm gonna believe this, that I am healed instead, in Jesus' name. It's not about the pain's not there, the pain's not there, the pain's not there. No, it's about I am healed in Jesus' name. I am free in Jesus' name. I am delivered in Jesus' name. He has delivered me and translated me out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son. Okay? Then you praise him for the answer. Thank you, Lord, that I am free now. Faith is now. Thank you that I am delivered now. I praise you. I thank you that I am healed now. My healing is now. You may not feel like it, but thank him for it. Thank him for it. You know, when we um, brought the kids to Disney World um, a couple years ago, and um, he, you know, we told them before we're like, hey, guess what? We're going to take you guys to Disney World. And they were like, ah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, they gave us big hugs and they were so excited and they were like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, they weren't there yet. They didn't see it yet. <laughs> we hadn't even packed or anything yet. It was still, you know, a few weeks away. And but yet they believed our word and they thanked us for it beforehand. And so thank the Lord for it. Thank him. And um, I just want to read this um, thing from Smith Wigglesworth said, I can't understand God by feelings. I can't understand the Lord Jesus by feelings. I can only understand God the Father and Jesus Christ by what the word says about them. God is everything the word says he is. We need to get acquainted with him through the word. And I thought, you know, it's like so often we want to get acquainted with God through our feelings. and. I'm not saying feelings won't be there because man, when you get filled up with the word and you get filled up with his presence and he comes in and he's there, you can feel him. You feel him. And so you do feel him, but we're, we can't depend on those feelings because it's through the word that we, um, we learn about him and his character and everything needs to be backed up through the word. Even a word that you get from somebody or if the Lord comes and gives you a vision and he tells you all this stuff, Okay, Lord, show me that in your word. Like, that's one thing. Every book I've read of Kaylin Pagan, that he says, you know, the Lord visited me and he told me this. And said, okay, show me that in your word. Show me where that is. And he's like, okay, sure. Yeah, it's right here. So, um, you know, but so often we're like, if we feel good, then we're confident that he heard our prayer. But if we don't feel good, we're in like condemnation or whatever, then we have no confidence that he heard our prayer. 
and our and we base our faith on our feelings when it should be based on the word. And the word says in James 5:16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Well, we if you're born again, you're righteous. And if you're man, if you're crying out to the Lord, ah, Lord, help me with this. I, you know, I need this or whatever. He hears you. And there's another scripture. I'm not exactly sure where it is, but it says, if we pray according to the word, he hears us. So if we're praying according to the word, he's going to hear us. Okay. So our spirit, our heart believes in the word, regardless of seeing, hearing, or feeling. Our spirit becomes filled with assurance and confidence as we meditate on the word. And like, have you ever read a verse like over and over and oh, you're like, I've read this, I've read this, I've read this. And then all of a sudden, boom, it just like goes off inside of you. And you're like, oh my goodness, I've never seen that before. That is it getting into your spirit. That is when the revelation comes and you understand it in your spirit, not just head knowledge, but you're getting it. The Holy Spirit comes and he quickens it to you. And that's when it takes root in your heart. And that's when if you can keep meditating on that, meditating on that, man, that's going to grow and grow and grow. And it's going to continue to manifest in your life. And that's, that's what we want. That's what we want. That's what we want when it gets into our heart and it just explodes inside of us. So trust in the Lord, trust in the word with all our heart, not trusting in our feelings or the circumstances or what things may look around us, but, you know, actually getting into it. And when you get into the word, pray and say, Lord, help me believe this. I choose to believe this. I choose that if you came to me and said that my hair is black, I would believe it. And, or my eyes are, today is now Tuesday. Well, today would be then Tuesday. I believe every word that God says, I believe it as fact. I believe it as truth and everything else just falls to the wayside, you know? So that's what I have for you guys tonight. Um, I hope you got something from it and we'll just pray in closing. So father, I thank you. I ask that you would help us to believe your word, trusting in your word, Lord, when circumstances around us seem to be falling apart and we don't know what to do, we can look to your word and we can find the answer. Every answer we could ever have to any question is in your word. So I ask that you would just help us just enlighten our hearts, God, to you and your word bring revelation to us this week let our hearts be exploding with your love in jesus name amen amen <laughs>